tales of an ex first lady and why I was such a bad first lady. I was 21, 22 when he started the church when I was married. And I was a bad first lady because I didn't feel the need to be worshiped. I didn't like them calling me first lady. I didn't want them to call me first lady. And my defense was they just called Jesus, Jesus. And I said, y'all can call me Dorian, but the mothers of the church, they didn't like that. They didn't like me. <laughs> and it was always beef between them. And I wouldn't even say between my ex-husband and I, because I was always submissive. That was just my nature. Y'all see me rough and tough on these videos and I speak my truth, but that's because I found my voice. Back then I didn't have a voice, but the only time I had a voice is when it came to standing up against religious people. Other than that, I was real quiet and shy. I'll show you one of my first lady uh, pictures, my very first one. I'm 22, suited and booted up like that with that long dress on, suits at 21, 22 years old. They wanted me to wear big first lady hats. They would, and see, they would come and complain to him. My ex-husband say, you know, she needs to wear this and why is she wearing this? I'm 21, 22 years old. Those hats were bigger than me. I was skinny then. Those hats were bigger than I was. They wanted to have first lady in red, you know, and, and have all the women dressed in red, first lady day. I didn't want none of that, y'all. I'm Like I'm saying, I'm 22 years old and that's what they wanted me to do. And so I would buck everything. I wouldn't buck him because I'm just, I'm in my feminine energy. When I'm in a relationship, I'm in my feminine energy. But when it comes to my life work, it's a totally different energy. And they would say, we want to call you first lady, call, call you first lady. And I said, no, my name is Dorian. You're going to call me that. And I struggled with that so bad. And so I finally, I didn't accept it. I just said, you know what? If they're going to call me that, how I'm going to receive it is that means that I'm the first lady to come clean this church. I'm the first lady to show up. I'm the first lady that's on time. And that's the only way that I could process it because at the time I felt trapped in that marriage and nobody's ever trapped. You make a choice and you decide um, for the most part. But I thought I was trapped in that marriage, newly married. God hates divorce. Remember that one. And our uh, first lady was just not something I wanted to be called, especially at that age. And I just did not feel the need to be worshiped or to be honored in that way, just because I'm married to somebody who has a title pastor. And so they would want me to, um, you know, have those, those things that represent first ladies sit me in the front. I was sitting in the back. I was bad. <laughs> I would do it on purpose too. And then one time we had evangelized and got some ladies of the night, some prostitutes to start coming to church. It was three of them. And they only had certain kind of stockings. And you know, you're supposed to wear pantyhose to church, but they didn't have the kind of stockings that church people have. So they would not come to church or they would come to church in pants because they didn't have the right type of pantyhose. So a couple of Sundays would go by and they didn't show up. So, so I called them. I went to the back office because, you know, you have Sunday school at the top before the real church service or discipleship class or something like that. And I would go into the office and I called them. I was like, so and so, where y'all been? Well, so and so, mother of the church, uh, said that we can't wear pants to church and we don't have anything else. So I took off my pantyhose in that back office and I told them I don't have on no pantyhose either. So you can come. Boy, a demon manifested out of one of those mothers. And I'm not, I'm not joking. Like just, she went crazy and nuts. And I sat, and I never just sat on the front row without pantyhose. You know, you still have to have that little lap, lap uh, towel, whatever you call that. And I would just sit in the back. Even with first ladies, this lady just stood up next to me. I was somewhere and she just stood up and she said, you know what? They want us to have a first lady brunch this weekend and they want us to pay $25 to contribute to it. And then they want us to give her $25. She said, that's just too much. I looked at her and said, that is too much. For what? And I'm going to say some things that's going to hurt y'all's feelings, I'm sure. But your first lady is just a lady. There's nothing special about her. I'm just going to tell you the truth. She is a human just like you. I had the same wisdom and knowledge and teaching and authority that I did, that I have now. I had that back then, except I was teaching the word and teaching the Bible. And I was a great teacher great psalmist and worship leader, all the things, but that did not make me special just because I was gifted. That didn't mean that I should be getting extra money because I had these gifts. And, and here's the thing, all the videos that I have been making, I have lived this all my entire life. Even when I was in the church bucking, that doesn't make sense to me, nope. And I wanna stick to the first lady part because I was in that role. 
And no, and no, I'm not putting on that hat. No, I'm not wearing that. No, you're not going to call me that. Yes, they can come to church even though they don't have pantyhose. And I said, if you have on pants, you can walk up in this church. And it was a big old issue at the after service, and they against me. And to be on in his defense, my ex husband, he's standing in the middle. He's he's in the middle of it, like trying to figure out, you know. And I'm at home like, hey, God gave you this vision. God, you know, you need to take off their glasses and put on the one that God gave you. That's how I would speak at the time. But now I look back over it and I see that I've always believed this way. I've always thought this way. This is nothing new. I know that this was off and I'm so grateful because every time they would say first lady, I would cringe. I'd be like, Ugh. on the inside, it just, it just didn't feel right because it wasn't right. Why are you calling me that? Why are you giving me that title for what? Because he chose and he said, I'm going to be a pastor. And let me tell you this. Being a first lady, like there, there was no marriage. There's no marriage, no real union like the union that I'm in right now. Like, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was married for seven years as a first lady. We never went on one date. I'm not joking. I'm not lying. For seven years, we did not go on one date. The, oh, I'm telling you the truth. Not one date date in seven years because the ministry was you know priority we didn't have weekends to go out saturdays was filled with getting the building ready making sure there's toilet paper tithe offerings going to the christian bookstore to get communion cups there was no dating nothing there was only one date and i'm gonna tell you why that was the date but seven years we're getting ready for worship we're getting ready for songs we got to go over the songs that we're going to sing and there was there was some time throughout those seven years where he had closed his church and we were under somebody else but we were always in leadership every time we'd walk in the door you know who is she what does she do who are they and then they find out i sing or do music now i'm up there leading the worship so there was no life and i tell you i think i mentioned in a video that there's a home video in a photo of me kneeling down to my four-year-old daughter saying that you know, mommy and daddy have to go lead worship because the church we were at wanted to start a Saturday night service. We had to leave our own child's birthday party. And there was no dating. There was no marriage. And you talk about love songs, none of that. No love songs, all worship music, all Christian music, all the Take Me to the Kings and all that. And I don't know if that song was out at that time, but I'm using that as an example. It was all... The Fred Hammonds, Fred Hammond. Now he was a, a staple in our home. It was Fred Hammond, glory to the Lord, glory in the house, all that, all the worship music was in there, all the hill song, all the things, Israel Houghton. That's all we ever played nonstop all day. And you wonder why we divorced. That's not the main reason. I mean, anyways, um, no love like that, no romance. It was all romancing Jesus and loving the Lord. The love was always directed toward God, but not towards each other. The love that we had was always directed toward Jesus, but not to each other. And of course we loved our kids, but there was not one date. We were always at a conference, either leading it or being a part of it. I'm leading worship, whatever the things, always something on the weekends. We didn't go out and do anything. Prison ministry, no love, no, no romance. And I did a video that I'll tag being in a loveless, sexless, godless marriage because there's no God when there's no sex inside your marriage. Where's God in that? I always felt that people were equal. I always felt that there was something off with the system and that you don't need to march us in. And why do I got to sit on the front row? And then they wanted to put chairs on the stage. These mothers wanted to put chairs on the stage so that all the, you know, the pastors and their wives can sit. I don't want to sit up there. A woman, she became one of our deaconesses and we had our babies and I would just sit on the front row. I've always liked to sit on the front row anyway when it came to just being in church because I was a student. I just wanted to hear and learn. But I'm, I said, I'm not sitting on a stage where people can look at me. For what? I am nobody in that sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm great and divine within myself, but I am nothing to be worshipped. I am nothing for you to be looking at me like that's our first lady. I don't want that. I don't want the weight of that. Because if I fall, then you can fall. And I have the same propensity to fall like anybody else. And so, no, I don't agree with the role of that you need to have these dinners and breakfast, lunch to honor the first lady. For what? Because she's married to him? I'm just being honest. For what? You know, I don't believe in a system like that anymore anyway. But now it's very clear to me 
through the videos that I'm watching and to hear her say that I forgot that I was actually a first lady. I know I say it all the time, but I don't reflect on my experience as much as I used to, you know, because I'm out of that. But I've been reflecting on that today. And I see that I'm still saying the same thing today. Everybody's here equal. We shouldn't be putting anybody in these positions. And I'm just saying, what does she do that's so special? Well, she prays over the men of God and, you know, she labors for all the women. I can labor for myself. We all, shoot, women, we have babies. We can, we know how to labor. We can labor for ourselves. And the fact that this lady stood up and said that she's in her 60s, it was a burden for her. She was like, that's just too much. Then they want, the fact that she's complaining. And I wanted to say, just don't do it. But I like to honor people where they are, allow them where they want to be. If she asked me, that's one thing. If she would have been like, what you think about that? I would have broke it on down, baby girl. Come to my YouTube playlist. But I just said, yep, yeah, that is too much. And looked her dead in her eye and hoping that it just went through hers. Like to see what I'm saying to you. To have to donate $25 and then have to send her, to give her $25. So that we can come to some brunch and just talk about how great our first lady is. What the hell? What the all-time hell? What does she do for us? She prays for us and she labors for And when I call her anytime, she's always there. You can get a therapist to do that. You got a therapist uh, annual day. You still got to pay a therapist. Just, you're paying her for that. And, you know, nobody honest and, you know, everybody's look over her and, you know, we just want to honor her give honor where honor is due but that's a, there's a difference between honoring somebody and worshiping someone the one date that we had was when I filed for divorce I filed for divorce and I'm like I can't do it I, I just cannot do it and I've already talked about the details of that in some other videos but because we're talking about me being a first lady I just could not do it anymore as far as the marriage, I knew that this was not a marriage. This was not a life. And I was still young, still had some years in front of me. Then let's go on a date. That came about. Very nice, expensive, all the things. That was our first date when I filed. And I will tell you this. In his defense, we were both 21, 22 years old, just doing what we thought was right to do, doing what we were indoctrinated to do you're gonna be in ministry you got to be married you got to have a, a a wife you can't be single out here trying to do ministry so we didn't love each other we didn't we didn't love each other but it was a marriage of the kingdom a kingdom marriage right but there was no love there was no romance none of that religion itself yes it can take a toll on people's families and relationships and marriages but so much more so when you are a pastor and a first lady, especially if you're in it and you're committed. I'm not saying they're all like that. I'm not saying that there are pastors that don't prioritize their wife in ministry, but in mine, that was not the case. And in most, it is true. I painted on a smile a lot of days and there was some other stuff going on inside that marriage where I had to put, and they even told me, that's just the devil trying to steal your marriage, put on a happy face and put on some makeup to, to cover the things and just keep it moving. That's what they told me. That's what our spiritual covering told us. And I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm just saying there's a whole other world out there. There's a whole other side of things. And a lot of first ladies have to sit on that front row and just put on a smile. And they're not getting affection. They're not getting love. They're coming home and hearing their husbands talk about the church and the members and just talking about the things of the Lord and what God is and haven't taken her on one day in months and weeks and, and hide behind that excuse, you know, I'm doing the work of the Lord and, you know, God's going to bless us and God, no, mm, whatever. Here's what's really weird is while I was in it, I wasn't complaining about, oh, we don't take no day. It's like you're so blind by your calling, so to speak. You're so blind by, you think that you're doing the work of the Lord because it didn't really dawn on me that that's how the marriage was because my love was directed toward God that I'm honoring him by being supportive, being a good first lady, which I was really bad, <laughs> but by supporting him. I wasn't bad towards him, but when it came to that church stuff, yeah, I was, you know, yeah. And I feel for both of us because that was our 20s. That took both of our 20s, not just mine. Yes, we met some some people, made some connections, but none of us are friends. I'm, I know I'm not. I'm not friends with any of them. So yes, it, I feel like it took my 20s from me.